Welcome to this life transforming teaching brought to you by Bishop Alex Okedo, the presiding bishop of the Living Apostles Global Church. It is his vision to raise generational assets by turning on the light. Receive today's word as it brings light to your path. The book of Psalm chapter 30 actually was written because the writer was actually trying to put to God and to remind God that he is his helper. And in the course of that book, you find out that the writer also continued and told God that my joy is actually what you desire. God actually takes pleasure when his people is joyful. When David was dedicating the house, his house, he read that that was one of the declarations he made in Psalm chapter 30. He began to tell God that you are my help. I will praise you because you have lifted me up. This year, God will cause you to have dedication that will bring about you as the fine of the lifting of God in your life. Now, this evening, I want to actually speak from um, particular two points. I want to give you about two points, which is the result of the impact of joy. Number one, remember I told you when I started teaching on joy, that joy is not circumstantial. That joy is a result of a relationship with God. It is important you have that at the back of your mind. Now, when we talk about this joy, that this joy is not circumstantial. For example, when a man gets a vehicle, a brand new vehicle, he's happy. So that happiness at that point is not actually joy. When somebody acquires something very new, something that is uh, what's dreaming for the person is joyful or still that is not you cannot call that joy joy is the product of a walk with god joy is a product of a relationship with the father joy is a product of walking with the holy spirit no wonder the bible is speaking in psalm 16 which actually is the book where the writer of the book of psalm wrote about the joy of god he actually wrote about the joy of the lord in psalm 16 he now said, he said, for you will show me the paths of life. He said, for in thy presence is fullness of joy. He said, that I write and they are pleasures forevermore. So the presence of God is the guarantee for joy. Now, but we need to understand that this joy that God gives, there are basic assignments that this joy achieves in your life. On the account of this joy, there are things it is released for. Joy is not just given into the believer's life for nothing. Every time a believer talks about joy, whenever the word of God speaks about joy, there is some things that this joy actually achieves in his life. We we'll see in Psalm 30 verse 5, say, For his anger endureth for a moment. Say, Weeping may endure for the night. Say, But joy cometh in the morning. It is the joy of the Lord that actually guarantees the brightness of the morning. It is the joy of the Lord that guarantees the shining. It is the joy of the Lord that brings about a believer turning from things that wants to bring depression into things that actually brings about the elevation. I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody, your joy will be full this season. I say, may your joy be full this season. Now, I want to quickly show you the book of Nehemiah chapter 8. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, the Bible says, Then he said unto them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Now, notice what he says. He says, For this, is, this day is holy unto our Lord. Now, he says, Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Number one impact I want to bring to you tonight is that joy is the principal guarantee for strength. It is the principal sponsor for strength in the life of a believer. Strength is simply the capacity to withstand pressure and to comfort victoriously. Strength is simply stamina, ability to withstand pressure and to break forth in victoriously is strength. Now, it is the stamina and energy to hold on to God's word, even when it appears as if it is not working. Your ability to hold on to God's word, even when it appears as if every single thing God has spoken to you, you have not even taken delivery of one. 
It looks as if God has been promising the word of God. I've said so many beautiful things about you. And these promises of God seems to be hanging. The ability to hold on to that word is strength. The ability not to worry and to still believe God even when there is no hope is strength. The church of God and believers today need strength in times like this. We are in a world where all manner of bad news flies here and there. Before you know, you wake up in the new year, the new year message will tell you breaking news. And before you look at the breaking news, you begin to hear that they say so-so number of people died in so-so thing. Ghastly motor accident. Tanker. caught fire. This one happened. In a world where bad news flies like the hair will breathe, we need the strength of God. And this strength of God, the Bible says, is the joy of the Lord. Now, in the book of Nehemiah, it says, Go your way, eat and eat the fat, drink the sweet. Send portions unto them to whom nothing is prepared. He said, For this is an holy day. This is a day of holiness unto God. Why will you be telling someone that have more reasons to be feeling bad? Because the next thing he says, say, neither be ye sorry. Challenge is everywhere, but today is a holy day. He said, what you need to do is to go your way. Go and eat and drink. And not just for yourself. Make sure you give to those that don't have. Feed the hungry. Still help people that need help. He said, this is a holy day. He said, you have no reason to be sorry about today. You have no reason to be apologetic. You have no reason to feel bad about what today has. He said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I am praying that the joy of the Lord will rapture every situation of war in our heart. And the systems that have break down our faith will gain life again in the name of Jesus. He said, then Ezra told them, say, go your way and eat fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. And be not grieved or depressed. Be not grieved and depressed. So they had reasons to be grieved. They had reasons to feel bad. They had reasons to be depressed. So I said, but don't be grieved. Don't be depressed today. How will you be telling a man that has enough challenges? The law of the land and every single thing is already working against him. You are telling him, don't be depressed. You are telling a man that he's hearing that he has bills to pay, but there's no money in the account. There's no money to pay them. There's no friend to even give him money. The people that would have given to him per adventure are even going through difficult situations, even similar or worse situations. You are telling the man, don't be depressed. How can you tell someone that wakes up every day and don't know how he will go, be- go-, go to bed? Is- there's no guarantee that there will be food in this night. You say, go home and be happy. Go home, don't be depressed. There are challenges everywhere around you. And hear me, if you want to begin to magnet them, even as a matter, you are going to find enough reasons to be depressed. You hear that fear is so so amount. You hear that this one has increased. You hear that this one has increased. And with all the increment, you realize that even minimum wage has not increased. And you are just a salary earner. How do I cope? He said, go your way. He said, this day is the day of the Lord. And let me put it here. This year is the year of the Lord. He said, this year is the year of the Lord. God is saying, do not feel worried. Do not be grieved. Do not be depressed. He said, because the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. That means joy is also a backup for a believer. The believer's backup is joy. So what do you fall back to if there is any challenge? You won't fall back to your savings. You have to fall back to the joy of the Lord. What do you look at when every single thing around you is showing you the red light? It's as if there's a red flag on your life. What do you look at? What do you draw strength from? It is the joy of the Lord. So child of God, tonight I want you to understand that God wants you to be a person that will walk with this joy. Because this joy, I call this joy the financier of a believer's strength. It is the financier of your strength. That is, it is joy that funds the believer with strength. It is joy that funds you. It is like your bank account. Loaded. Anytime you need to draw, you need to go to that bank. It is the joy of the Lord. So this joy is given to the believer to be able to survive the times. 
there may not be things giving you reason to be happy. You may not be hearing good news around you, but there is a good news inside, and it is being sponsored by this joy. Hear me, no believer can ever survive in today's world without the joy of the Lord or pressure in his life. No believer. No believer. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, the Bible says, If you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Say, if you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Proverbs 24, verse 10. Now, what is this strength? And the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So, if a man faints as a result of small strength, it simply means that the joy of that man is small. Because his strength is joy. And he said, you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. That equally means that your joy is small. How do I know? God wants you to have fullness of joy. He wants your joy to be complete. He wants you to have abundance of joy. He wants you to have overflowing joy, no matter the situation. So it is this joy that needs to be increased to its fullness in the life of a believer. That is why tonight, one of the things you will pray for this year is, Lord, I want to operate with overflowing joy. I want to walk in overflowing joy. I want to enjoy fullness of joy this year. No matter what I face, no matter what I will hear, I want to walk in fullness of joy. Do you know when a man is faced with some terrific situation, dangerous situation that is threatening to take his life, even his joy can become his deliverer. When a man is faced with kidnappers and armed robbers and is there fretting and is there shaking, they will be wondering, they themselves will know that what they are doing is working. But there's a kind of joy that wells up on the inside of a man. They'll begin to wonder, who is this person? Confusion becomes the order of the day amongst the enemy camp. When they see the believer they are attacking, the believer they are tempting, the person they are throwing arrows at, smiling and living in fullness of joy. May you have fullness of joy this year. Amen. I say may you have fullness of joy this year. Amen. So this joy is the financier of the believer's strength. So do you want your strength to be funded? You need joy. You need joy. You know, if you follow today's trend on social media, sometimes when they talk about it, they say that guy no get joy. It does. It sounds very funny, but it, it it makes sense. When someone is becoming too hot, somebody is too bitter. Talk all you want to talk. Give the person a platform. Give the person an opportunity still. There are people that you want to pray for, no matter the power of God available to heal them, as long as their joy is not released, you will not be able to heal them. You will not be able to minister to them. When you have no joy, you will not know when you begin to confess negative, and your words are powerful. As a person, one of the things I've learned that works for me, if I want to achieve anything, I try as much as I can to get my atmosphere excited. The moment I am excited in the spirit, I can prophesy, I can preach a sigh, I can miracle sigh. I can do every sigh, but not the wicked sigh. In fact, when I'm excited in my spirit, I can, I can, I can prize any, any, any project and I'll get it done. The devil knows how important your joy is when he is attacking you. Why do you hear bad news all the time? It's not because the bad news... Hearing it, for example, will not change anything. Do you know? May not change anything. The devil can go ahead, just go ahead if he was powerful enough to just kill who he wants to kill without informing you. But why, did, why is it that you have to hear that somebody is sick and the person is about dying? The devil wants you to lend your faith because he cannot do anything without the instrumentality of humans. So when you begin to fret, when you begin to fear, when you begin to shake, you will not know and say, hey, now so this begin to die. If the person, if it was your word that was needed to keep that child alive, you will just kill the child. And they will say the devil killed the child, not knowing you killed your child. You've got to develop enough strength on your inside to say no to the lie of the devil. Challenges will not stop coming. I did not say they will not come. I said they will not stop what? They will not stop coming. 
Sometimes you think that because you finish praying now, as you are going on, man, today I pray where I feel the thing. I know say God answer my prayer. On your way home, you are expecting that the first call you will get is going to be the call that will tell you done. And on your way home, the first call you will get will be to tell you that the problem has increased. That means your prayer is working. What the enemy wants to do is to get you to feel so bad, feel so irritated, feel like, ha. Ah, so all this prayer i have finished praying in church i just wish I, in fact i sowed the seed this fasting upon the fact that i said fasting still nothing is working no 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 you must not pray that way listen anytime you are praying and you are being attacked the more challenges are coming more know that the devil knows you are breaking grants he's trying to discourage you from praying that is the time to pray more so that you finish fasting and on your way you got the news doesn't mean that god did not answer you that's the time to laugh the devil to stupidity. I hear him. That is the time to laugh. He said, be not sorry. Don't be grieved. Neither be depressed. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So that joy of the Lord is your capacity to withstand pressure. That joy of the Lord is your stamina. That is your energy bank. It's not... The most money in your account is your strength. No, that's not it. He's not saying that the man that will call you next is your strength. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. Number two thing, what does this joy do? Now, I want you to understand also that this joy is vital also in bringing what I call speeding up the rate of victory in the course of challenges. The rate of victory in the course of challenges can be speed up by the virtue of what? Joy. Now, let me, let's see the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We shall read from verse 2. James chapter 1 from verse 2. I pray that God will fill you this year with joy. May God fill you this year with joy. Amen. I say may God fill you this year with joy. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The book of James chapter 1. Can we read from verse 2? He said, my brethren, count it all joy. There's a realm of all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations. Let me read it from the Amplified Translation. He said, consider it Holy, joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. So do Christians fall into temptations? Yes. Do trials of life come to believers? Yes. Is it possible that after fasting, trials will come to you? Yes. In fact, it is Y E S, capital letter. Verse 3 says, Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a true work, a thorough work, so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Joy has an assignment to do in the life of a believer. And what is this second assignment? It is the catalyst that speed up the rate of continual victory in challenges. It is the catalyst that speed up the rate of continual victory in challenges. We know that a catalyst is anything that speeds up or causes a kind of movement in the rate of things that happens now this joy actually is the catalyst that speeds up the rate of what victory when trials and challenges hits you or knocks on your door the joy on the inside is what guarantees the ability to eventually allow patience do a full work we need joy to
to flow from us. Many times you are praying for your husband. You are asking God and speaking to God about his life. Believing God that he will change. Things will get better with him. You have prayed and you have even invited him over. He has heard the word of God just like you do. You have gone for counseling session. But unfortunately you find out that it seems as if it's getting worse. It is that joy that will allow you, that will grant you the grace to be able to allow patience do a full work. The Bible says, my brethren, count it all joy. When you what? Go through diverse temptations. I like the way this amplifier put it. It says, when you are enveloped in, you are enveloped or you encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. He said, count it all joy. Why is God saying count it all joy? The all joy mandate is the mandate that helps you through trial times of your life. If you want to come out victorious in any situation you are facing right now, you need to imbibe joy as a culture of life. If you want to come out victorious, in any business venture, in anything you are doing presently, you need to imbibe joy as a culture of your life as a believer. God said, be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. That this trial of your faith, which is the result, you need to count it all joy, work it out patience. And the amplifier put it, he said, called it endurance. You endure hardness. You endure the pain. The Bible speaking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 12. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's not what I said. He said, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame so what was the thing that fueled the ability of christ to endure through trial times through difficult times what was it that jesus put place on his forefront what was his goal what was his eyes looking at the eyes of christ was beholding the joy that was set before him and the Bible is speaking, he said, because of that joy, he endured the cross. There is a cross to endure. 2023 has his own cross. You must enjoy it. Is somebody hearing me? When your family begins to persecute you because you now believe in God and you are insisting on getting it this way, don't expect them to clap their hands. Endure the cross. There's an endurance. Don't think that your mother or your father who prayed for you to be born again when you were wayward and now you are born again we understand the level when you are taking your christian to the next level they may not understand you've got to endure the cross there is a cross to carry jesus speaking see anyone that followed after me and look at back is not fit for the kingdom he expects you to take up your cross and follow him the cross is heavy the cross Many times it's painful. The cross sometimes is disregarding. Brings a kind of disrepute. May even make you look as if you are the worst criminal when you are the saint. But because of the joy. When you see joy. Endure the cross. This year, 2023. Child of God. And every other year if Jesus started to come. There, is, there will always be a cross to endure. Somebody hearing me. There will always be a what? A cross to endure. That cross may be coming in your marriage. Endure it. That cross may come even in the political setting where you belong. Endure it. The cross may even come in your business place. Endure that cross. When every of your neighbors in that business premise are all going to different herbalists to get sums to be able to push their sales and you have prayed and it seems as if the more you pray, the more powerful they become. Enjoy it. Don't give up on God because it seems as if I have been praying. It's not working. Our herbalist is working more than me. Listen to me. There's a cross to endure. I don't know the cross that God will bring to somebody tonight. I don't know the cross that you, you face this year. 
I may know, I may not know, but one thing I am sure of is that if you allow joy to be your focus, the cross will be manageable. If you allow that joy to be in your gaze, the pains of the cross will not deter you from following after Christ. There is a cross to endure this year. There is a cross to endure this year. Listen to me, there is a cross. Ha. His anger is but a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night. I don't know the night season you will face. Maybe it is when it, it, it is with shy bet. You have gotten to a point, you, you've taken it, you have carried it, it's time to deliver. And there you are in the room, in the delivery room. Having gone through all you went through, at the end of it, the story that came was not what God told you. And the Bible said, No, shall cast our bread young. What do you do as a child of God? How will I wait nine months just to have this lifeless being? Endure that cross. I don't know what your cross will be. I've been invested so much in a business. And one policy twats everything. And suddenly, what was done before turned. It's like when, you, when you're having something facing down. If you have a, a calibrated maybe meter or pole that you measure from zero to 100 and you have climbed from zero you are 999 suddenly a policy came and they turned it and your 99 became 0 0.1 endure it when we preach like this in church people would understand the prophetic dictates of god not their head well they nod their head. They say, hmm, it makes sense. But may it make sense in that day. May it make sense. May you not need pastor to preach to you again that time. Because why God gives you word is because God is preparing you for tomorrow. Having paid for every single thing and you are qualified for what? And you go to the time. It's now your turn. Or to just hear somebody tell you, get out of the line. Say what? Get out of the line. I say, leave the line. You say, sir, we came here since morning. This is, I was the 55th person. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm number three. I say, say, come out of the line. He says, sir, this is my line. Say, come out. Can you step out? While you are trying to speak English, they grab you. And they begin to treat you like a criminal. And you are expecting God to rain down fire from heaven. To prove to them that you are right. God may not rain down fire. You may sing, send down fire. Holy Ghost fire. You may sing it from now to tomorrow and still God will not do anything. And they embarrass you. Maybe while you are there, somebody just lied against you and they conspired against you and they turned everything. You are almost number one. And they turned you and they took you. They say you jumped and they grabbed you and they took you to number 56. Having waited for more than 50 something time. Now it is your turn. They took you back. Endure the cross. Everybody's looking for employment. They've told you your everything have been done. When it was time, suddenly they came up with one news and they said that your documents and everything are fake. They say it is false. This one is not correct. This one is not correct. And everything you presented was genuine. Somehow there was a conspiracy. It can come from the pit of darkness against you. Child of God. God did not promise us an easy movement. He only promised us a good arrival the bible says mark the perfect man and behold the upright he didn't say for the journey of that man he said for the hand of that man is peace smooth arrival you will arrive that's what i know but the process may be rough and tough endure the cross a woman may go through child pain during labor and the pain may be heavy and all everybody will be looking at her and sometimes even in our family everybody will say, we never had anybody have this kind of experience how come you that is the christian in the house you that preach jesus to us you that tell us repent for the kingdom of god is at hand why is your home pregnancy like this 
You have suffered everybody since you took it. Now it is time to put to bed. We don't know the kind of child you have. This type of child that is suffering everybody like this. And the doctor looks at you and says, Madam, say, please, can I have a word with you? Say, where's your husband? He says, bring your husband. Your husband come. They say, please, I'm sorry. We, we only have, I cannot guarantee, but it's 50-50. What is the matter, Mr. Doctor? Say, the baby is having this and the mother. But if we don't do this now, we may lose both. But let us save one at least. This or that. I look up. David said, I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. You are waited these months to embrace your miracle. Just to be hearing the medical scientists, medical doctors who are doing their job well. And they are not giving you the report you don't want to hear. Nobody wants to hear a bad report. Having waited how many years to go through school. And in your final year, you wrote your first semester. Everything was wonderful. Second semester, final year. Your project was an A. And you went, it was about two major courses. They start telling you story upon story. They say you failed it. And it's the dog, you, you, you tried to challenge the course. You went to exams and record. Challenging it, you ask them, say, how can this be? They brought out your paper. And you are not seeing what you wrote. It is your red number. It is your handwriting. But the answer is shameful. You say, no, but I remember I answered it well. So I can even answer it, what I, I can tell what I answered. But what you wrote is different from what you answered. <laughs> I don't want to tell you that while you were doing that, the Bible said, for why they slept, the enemy sold. The enemy may eventually come to sow tasks. But listen to me. You've got to hold on to joy this year. When your best or your hopeful, your relationship of advantage suddenly is taken away from you and you have to start from the scratch. I did not say taken away from you by death. Neither did I say taken away from you by transition or into another life. But it's taken away from you. When the man you have built over the years will suddenly, when it is time for an harvest, comes up with one excuse and one story. And they are telling you stuff and you check your life. All the accusations, you did nothing of them. And lies and conspiracy were all trending around you. Everything that was happening around you, you know this is not what it should be. That the enemy has done this. What do you do? Hold on to your joy. Looking unto Jesus. What it means to look unto Jesus is make jesus your example jesus christ is the perfect model is the perfect on the example you must put jesus how can you be if you are god and the things you created are punishing you can you stand being god and your creature is flogging you can you stand being god and your creature is hanging you on the tree can you stand being god and what you created is passing nails six inches nails on you can you stand being god and your creature is lashing you with that terrific spank of cane mixed with those little little sharp sharp object and they are wiping you for 39 times as they as they drop the cane they drag it out and the thing will go with a pound of flesh can you stand being god and you say you are looking at a joy what joy will God be looking at when he can take it without even working for it? But Jesus said, I am your example. Look unto me. I am the author. I am the finisher of your faith. But look, I saw a joy set before me. What joy? The joy of your salvation. The joy of having my brothers join me in eternity. The joy of seeing many turn unto Christ. And I endured the cross. Listen to me. The cross those days used to be in the, in the Jewish tradition was the worst of all. Was the most terrible and most embarrassing kind of punishment you can give to anybody. It is for holy criminals. In fact, it is said that even up to now in the, in, in the Jewish, in, in, among the Jews, some don't accept Jesus as their Lord for one reason. 
on the account of the fact that how can a man we call our Lord and Savior die that kind of criminal death? It's like saying that the most terrible armed robber that the whole society rejects is now the Lord and Savior of our soul. So sometimes they don't accept it because it looks like it's like a disdain. It is demeaning. It is denigrating. But listen to me, child of God. That same Jesus is the God. Instead of looking at those things, what people will say about him, he endured the cross. I don't know why God is speaking to you like this now. When you nod your head, not something inside. Because the word will be tried. The word will be tested. That time, you will know whether you got the message or not. He said he endured the cross. And you know the next thing he did? He despised the shame. Ah, that means shame was there. They will call you names. If you say physician, heal yourself. If God actually uses you, why didn't God do it for you? He said shame. He said despise it. So despise means ignore it. He didn't say reject the shame. Despise it. One time I know when I was, when those years I was ministering, I used to minister to people. They were hard looking. People trusting God for life partner like they call it they will come to me will minister to them they'll get theirs but when it was time for me for more than five years nobody it was as if i i knocked the door of the devil to ask for a wife and they'll say i will i give you it was as if the whole hell let loose i had to encourage myself with the comfort of scriptures sometimes god will use you to do things for people that you can't even enjoy it is a shame that people say, look at you, don't have, you say you, you are talking about school, you don't even have a school, you don't even graduate, you dare people. Listen, despise the shame. Because there's a joy bigger than whatever people think. There's a joy. One day you realize that your service of God is not in vain. The Bible says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the love of the Lord. As long as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. What we are doing for God, there's a pay. Whenever I go to the Lord, I always believe, I always remember his word. He said, for he that cometh to the Father must first believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I know God rewards. If I don't have something physical to show, I know that one day in eternity, there will be something to show. One day it will make sense. It may not make sense now despise that shame you may be taking care of other people's children and yes you don't have your own despise that shame they say look the day you flog another person they say look at your wickedness that's why god did not give you your own huh? is it wrong to even flog is it wrong to discipline or to correct you may correct even another person they will now use it on you say that is your witchcraft you go and visit your in-laws as you're hunting the with oh my the whole the other daughter in law that came with her children will be dancing. They say, hey, your mother in law said, hey, these are my this is these are my children. They gave me grandchildren. This one, hmm, I beg you. We don't want to, we don't, I don't know how my son went to marry a fellow man. Listen, despise the shame. When they were mocking Anna, when Penina was mocking Anna, senior wife, senior wife Anna was being mocked by Penina. Ah, Holy Ghost, help us. She never knew that a time was going to come that the one that will come from that same Anna will become the judge of Israel. Despise the shame. There is a shame to despise in 2023. The shame of look at you carrying church in your head. Despise it. The shame of being a, so you say you are a pastor. I remember those days when we started ministry. Everybody when we walked, people were calling us names, mocking. In fact, sometimes they look at me. I remember one that was moving and the girl looked at me and they, I thought I thought, who is this person? I was trying to understand. The next thing he said, ha! And the next thing I will hear, so we threw some kind of words. And you look at yourself. Some of them, if we are to boast in the flesh, educationally, they are not better than you. If we are to boast, you may look at yourself to some extent, I think I've seen better light. But what is, why will a, a chemist be mocking a pharmacy? You say they do the same thing. They are not. And you say, you stand, you look at, look at Kwekere laughing at plantation ships. 
<laughs> you look at yourself. David says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. What do you look at when challenges begin to face you? I don't know what. Sometimes God has blessed you. You have helped a lot of people. A time comes, God allows you to, to go through some process. And that process is a process God wants to reveal so many things to you. You see the same people God uses you to bless when they begin to rate you. When they begin to model foolishness before you. Some of them you even go, if the mistake you make is to ask them for a favor. When they finish dealing with you, you will regret. You say, had I known, I would have better died than asked for this favor. Have you not seen years that you tell things, but that here is a microphone connected to a very quality, powerful amplifier and good speakers. Just tell them of your challenge. The next thing you hear, you hear it in ABS. By the time you are trying to remove it from ABS, it has gone viral on CNN. You think CNN is now, they will now go and pay one guy that is trending to please finish you. And when you begin to see your picture, you say, oh God. You ask yourself, what have I done to have this kind of embarrassment? The Bible says, Jesus despised the shame. That Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 is for somebody. There's a joy set before you. There's a joy set before you. There's a joy set before you. If you are going to win and you are going to end up speeding up your victory in challenges. If you are going to have fast track solution then allow joy to be your gaze. No matter what you are facing right now every problem of life has an expiry date and let me shock you sometimes the expiry date is not the problem sometimes it's the person that will expire and leave the problem after all they say sometimes when people die you say they say they die say allow the man rest he has suffered enough will sickness follow him and follow him to the land of the no I don't know what God have decided about your life this year. One thing I know that is sure. One thing I am assured of this year is that there is joy. There is joy. You must look at that joy. See that joy in your eyes. Don't allow the devil show you anything different. Keep seeing joy. Keep seeing joy. Keep seeing joy. You may be living in that small touched house, that small room with about three of you, three families in one room. It doesn't matter. He said, can you imagine, even as a husband, I don't even have you. Somebody is complaining to you that, you know, me and my family and my children, we live in one room. And they say, look at you, you are talking of you and your family in one room. You even still have a little time with your wife. Me, the one we live, we are three families in one room. And it's a touched house. And the other person has four children. The other one has all of us are managing the room. And we are not even able to renew it. He says, so my brother, do you know how I want to, sometimes I want to talk to, I escort my wife to bedroom. So that, because you don't, no matter what your case is. One thing I know, that is definite in my heart. My tomorrow must be greater than today. There is a tomorrow for you. And that tomorrow is tomorrow of joy. That tomorrow is tomorrow of joy. So God said, count it all joy. When you go through diverse challenges and temptations of life. Count it all joy like Jesus. Because he said, knowing this, there should be an assurance in your heart. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. He said, but let patience, allow patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing you might be a husband as much as God has helped you you love and care about your wife but sometimes the kind of energy you get from your wife is discouraging sometimes you feel that insult you know that she is disrespecting you it is obvious and some of them are doing it the Christian way Christian way. Where you hear your wife praying sometimes and he's praying, Lord, you know this is my husband. He's very lazy. I just don't want to quarrel. But Lord, I pray that you touch him to be hardworking like other men like him. That you need the Christian way. Oh, ah, 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 ah. 
My tomorrow must be greater than today. Sometimes you hear, you hear, you hear another prayer. Somebody's praying, and the kind of feedback you get from the prayer is like somebody's mocking you. If you've not been there before, I've seen a lot of things happen around. And sometimes you just laugh. Who is my greatest model? Jesus Christ. I read in my Bible when they came to him, they said, You physician, heal yourself. And Jesus told them, I know you will say again, Physician, heal yourself. I know you will say it. I'm used to hearing you say it. Challenges are not the end of a man's life. I don't know the Christian way they curse you. Sometimes they will go and bring a pastor, borrow a pastor to come and talk to you. Say you say you're a Christian. Don't mind that. You know my daughter, please come. You the man will come with all his title. Most reverend doctor, honorable ambassador, professor, and then I put his name, Joshua, Jesus. Then they put it JP3. When the name is a sentence, does it make, mean that their sentence will make any sense to you? Some of those sentence names will only end up sentencing you to destruction. Some will not understand your work with God. In my little work with God, I've realized that working with God is more personal. It's very personal. There are things I can't even explain to my wife. As much as I love her, we stay together. I don't know how to explain because there are things it was not designed for her. Every work with God is personal. Sometimes they want to invite somebody to talk to you. They can even invite a bishop or anything. Thank God God has helped us. We have achieved some of those feats. But listen to me. That doesn't mean that the person is right. You must know your work with God. We go through stuff for God. Have you prayed? Church grow. Church refuse to grow. What matters? Are you following God? Have you prayed? Oh God, this sickness, let it go. In the name of Jesus, get out. And the thing is, stay in. Paul prayed for three times. Lord, this heal me of this. And God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. See, for my grace is perfected in your weakness. And Paul suddenly said, now, I will no longer, but I will rejoice. I will be joyful in my affliction everybody may get testimony after being prayed for you they will pray and pray and pray and pray as if after praying the problem will increase sometimes it's god even stopping your answer and you don't know why what will it look like to be a mary mary woke up one day after an angel's visit and she was pregnant some people are praying to be pregnant the lady that did not pray to be pregnant got pregnancy i am sure that mary would have if you leave her she, she just as she's winning, she said, believing that one day the thing will go out because the shame was too much. I called it controversial favor of God. Do you know what it means to just take him as a virgin? How do you explain it in a society that is highly religious? That God came to you, you of all people, you. When you have finished committing, you now use God and lie. You know what they tell you sometimes? They say, after you have finished messing up, you'll be using God. Because God, if, if, if God used thunder, fire you now, you go say, God, we can. You are just using God to lie. And sometimes you see a man of God come to you. He will wear, he will dress like a priest and come to you and look at you. He say, talk to me. They can have pastoral voice, but that doesn't mean they are pastoring you. You must know the voice of God. This year, you need to walk by divine instruction. This year, you must be someone that know your left from your right in God. Don't be among those that be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the scorning slate of men. Know what God is telling you as a person because you are going to attract some level of conspiracy. But there's a joy set before you. Despise that shame. So listen to me. Divers temptations one day the children cried they say the bible wrote they say what are we going to say about this generation they are like children crying that we have sung and we have done everything and you refuse to dance 
If you have not preached in a place where you say, Praise the Lord, and everybody's looking at you, nobody say hallelujah. You have not started preaching. I've been to meetings, I've been to crusades to minister. When you stand, you obviously know you see the problem of everybody sitting on their face. You, nobody is sitting, the problem is sitting. You say hallelujah. And the worst is that if the man of God mistakenly introduce you and introduce you, you know the same way introduce you or the same way introduce other men of God before. They say they have come again. We are waiting. I didn't know they are not the same people. <laughs> you see a woman who is thinking of how do I bring my husband who is in prison? How do we really come out? A lady that every night when everybody is sleeping, the epileptic side is performing. You begin to hear cases upon cases. As you look into the multitude, you see, you see problem. Nobody will tell you there's problem. <laughs> And you know the funniest thing? Sometimes God is not interested in miracle. You want to minister and preach about the power of God to do miracles. Will God do miracles? Yes. No, God says you are going to tell them love me. And all of them have been hearing love me for the past five years. And their problem has increased. And you stand and look at men. When you look at them. You feel that God, does it make sense? To be telling someone that you love him. When the person has been lame from his mother's womb. What, how does it make sense? When this woman that have her only son is epileptic. He's the first wife of a man that have three wives. And all the other wives, their children are all healthy. All of them. This woman, the only thing she will get from her husband's side is that this epileptic mbe of a boy. And the woman have been trusting God for 20 years. If you go to the church register, you find out that such person where they, they are the people who have been taking care of the church, sponsoring the church. But it's even possible that that woman built the church with her sweat. The other women are taking care of their children. She's taking care of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you have seen, but in my little life, I have experienced a lot of people that when you say in the name of Jesus, stop it. Enough. I'm not telling you to pray. I'm talking to you like a fellow man. Talk to his brother. Just, just, just cancel me. I don't want to hear about your Jesus. I know this God more than you. One time a man looked at me and said, look, you don't know me. He said, you don't know me. He said, we are the people that brought this thing, this gospel in the East. You are enjoying it. Well, I told him, no, I was not born again in the East. Just to disconnect from that is lineage. I said I was not born again in the East. He said in the 70s, this is what we did. So so time we do this. So so time. He said, <laughs> he said, what will you say? Bible school. We are the people that attended so so so, so person's Bible school. What do you tell such a man? Some who say God has failed them. A young girl said, I became a Christian from when I was a very young girl. I am a virgin to date. He said, look at me. How old am I? I'm over, I'm over 55. One day we did a program. After a program, we hosted the man of God here. Yeah. I was in the office the following day. And a, a woman just came. I don't know how she got to know. I don't know what happened. She came here and entered the office. Came in. And she insisted that she wants to see me. My pastors were saying, no, do you have an appointment? By the end of it, I came out. He told me that the woman causing trouble. I came out. I said, Madam, good afternoon, ma. He said, huh? Are you are the one. You are the one that brought such a person here. He said, tell him. And began to harass me that day. <laughs> what was it? He said, God has visited me. Forgot how we used to pray together. And God has not remembered me. And now he, he has forgotten me. I said, God, though. I said, God, I asked the woman, I said, please, can I? He said, no, 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 no. He said, tell him so, 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 person. Call. He said, I, he said, he now hangs out with people like you. But he forgot how we were the one praying. Look at what my, my life is. Praying. And God, look at him. God has answered him. He will enter. He, he no longer remembers me. People are bitter. But listen to me. You can't be bitter and better at the same time. I don't know what you have invested some of you, as I see you, your journey is about to start. That journey for joy is about to start. 
I wish I would tell you not to say amen. But you see, God is God all by himself. I have learned to follow God and ask him for grace. That's why every time you see me saying, God, more of your grace. I was in the bank doing something and somebody met me. Say, we're in your service. This, 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 that, 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 that. Say, I was so blessed by your third first night. Say, my husband said, we'll be coming. We'll be coming now. This is where... I said, wow, I said, thank God. I said, hope I did not knock by. I said, no, 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 no. You are doing what I say more. As she said, more grace. I just said, amen. I cried. So I said, I said, what? I said, I said, more grace. Now I will greet. I said, amen. And with all my heart, I was receiving the more grace. I'm afraid when people say good, when they pass me, I'm afraid. Sometimes I tell God, please, don't let this pass look like other pass that passed away. Hear me, child of God. There is a cross to endure. There is a shame to despise. That's why if you are one of those who when you give God, you write his record. You know, some of you have this of how much I've given to God. You've already said it this year. I gave God 10,000 on the 5th of January around 5.30 p.m. I gave another 7,000 to sister. This is because of God. That same 5th. But that is a recording. Don't worry. One, as you are recording, one day say the Bible says, "Bring forth your strongest." You lift. You say, "Lord, remember my twenty thousand. Remember my seven thousand. Look at it. Look at what I've given. Only this month I've given out fifteen million. And your words say we should bring forth our strong reason. Get ready to have reason to cry. If God records how many times you breathe in and breathe out, you will not have voice to talk. This year, be careful what you take into yourself. You've already said, ah, Lord, I gave my first fruit. My first fruit this year. Sometimes there are things I choose to forget. I forget them for my own good. <laughs> for my own good. There are certain expenditures we make in the name of the gospel. I forget them. I delete their record and the memory of them for my own good. Because sometimes, you know, after that, you, you are about to rejoice that, Lord, thank you for giving me the grace to stretch and make this sacrifice then they will knock on your door and remind you that less than 0.5% of what you have invested for the kingdom is a basic need to meet. And you look up and down from whence cometh my help. And if you are not careful, your wife will look at you and she will not say anything. That I say, I told you before. She did not say anything, but she reminded me, I tell you, you say, don't worry, you they do faith. Now I want to see your faith. <laughs> The point is this. Following God is personal. And I leave you with this word. Don't think that the, joy, the journey for joy is going to be a joyful one. You've got to choose to be joyful. We had the testimony of the young man that was kidnapped on Sunday after service. Every pastor went home like I went home. Getting ready to enjoy maybe heat and sleep. I was still trying to address one or two meetings. The next thing I heard, I saw, I saw a call. I saw two calls. Two missed calls each from my pastor and the wife. So I had four missed calls from them. And I looked, I said, why will these people be calling me after service? I said, they don't call me like this. As I looked at it, I know that something must have happened. If it is testimony, they can wait. If it is testimony, they can take their time and type the test. And type it and tell you, sir, I just want to tell you something. Can I call you? But this type of call, <laughs> Lord, and I looked at myself. I said, Lord, am I ready for this? But in the end of it, I had to return the call. Because when the wife's phone is not involved, that means that somehow, somehow, husband and wife is aware. If it was just husband, I would have said, let me leave the call till I'm ready. Maybe the following day I would pick the call. But since wife has not called, that means it must have been a discussion. I said, have you called Papa? Or our papa called you. <laughs> so, he said, no, I won't call papa. The wife picked her phone and started calling. And I said, okay, what is the matter? When I called, he said, I'm just returning. After service, we went to the place, we are returning. They just told us that so, so, and so, one of our key leaders was kidnapped. I said, who? He said, I said, I want to quickly rush into a place of defense. I said, was he in service today? I didn't know what he was saying. So I was like, if he's not in service, hey, so why was he not in service? If he was in service. 
But God allows things to happen. There is a joy. I remember two years ago when we had the same similar experience here. Okay, now I said, Lord, we cannot start fasting again. We are starting fasting tomorrow. <laughs> and they are already kidnapping at this point. I said, is it part of the miracle? Oh, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your grace. And I asked him, I said, he said he was in church. I said, okay, so where? He said he was on his way to Portacourt. And they kidnapped him with all the people in the vehicle. I said, did he tell you he was traveling? He said, he just greeted me and left. I said, how can somebody be in church after service? He was traveling, and your leader could not tell you that I'm traveling for whatever trip. And then while I was saying that, the voice of God came to me in my spirit and told me all these questions you're asking is not because you want to avoid this matter i say yes you know i want to avoid this one so that whatever the devil does nobody will blame me on this <laughs> because the problem we have in today's church is that when god visits you and you are thanking god for the gift of your man of god they attack you they say thank god leave the man of god but when something happens to you that is not so wonderful and you, they will not blame the man of God that they told you not to appreciate. What a world. <laughs> and I stayed there when he was talking. So when that voice came and I looked at and I and I took my phone, I was the one returning the call. And I lifted up my voice. And I told him, today you told me to tell your people to declare that we will not go down to the grave. That we will not go down to the pit of death. And I kept declaring it. I said, you did not tell me this, but I was declaring it. I said, you interrupted my message. You remember what you, I want to preach and you changed it. I said, I said, now, Lord, all I'm going to ask you, put confusion in their midst. This one. Already the young man was saying that. Well, by the time he called me, he said they just called him and told him, if they don't bring this, already they've killed some persons. Why is it that people take pleasure in killing and sharing blood these days? There's a devil in the streets. There's a devil in the street. The rate at which people take pleasure in killing these days. I say, is it human being they are killing or what? How people will just waste their life. But your life will not be wasted. Child of God, you hearing the sound of my voice, they will not waste your life. Anybody that digs a pit for you will go inside for you. Amen. The Bible says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen. He said, for no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. So every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment is condemned. The Bible says, for this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, say the Lord. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 and 18. Hear me, I decree over you. Receive. Anybody that wants to waste your life will waste their time. Amen. God will keep you. Amen. God will keep you. Amen. So when he told me that lies and this, and I said, told him, this one will not be touched. I said, I remember speaking to him in Festival of Wonders, and I called him by name, and I warned him, I said, be careful. I said, this one will not be touched. And I began to pray. As I was praying, I handed it, I told him, okay, don't worry. Tell them, if they call you, tell them I've done nothing. And I, I lost my peace and began to pray. All through the night, I was praying. I said, Lord, you did not call the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. And I said, Lord, I can't afford to allow this devil steal our joy. What am I going to tell the world? Because I know that's how the world. I, I, one time we lost one, and when we lost one, I know, I know how I even, it took the grace of God for me to believe that we came out of it. To believe that we came out of it. That means I don't even know if we came out of it. And I told God, I said, anyone that wants to die, take him two years away from us. I said, anybody that has a covenant of death, and you know you will not use me to stop it, the person should be, just take the person away from the church and keep the person two years away. Let's finish forgetting the person. <laughs> but for you, you will not die. Amen. I say you will not die. Amen. I decree you will not die. Amen. I declare you will not die. Amen. No matter the gang up, you will not die. Amen. No devil will aspire you this year. Amen. 
you may not be qualified, but may the grace of God preserve you. Amen. May you and your household be preserved by grace. Amen. May you and your family be preserved by the grace of God. Amen. When men are cast down, may you be lifted up. Amen. May the hand of God's protection rest upon you and your household. Amen. I decree and declare that the voice of criminality will not be heard in your house. Amen. The voice of weeping will not be heard in your house. Amen. I cancel every gang up of the enemy against your life. Amen. I pray and I proclaim over your life and your family and all your interests. May you be shielded by the grace of God. Amen. You will not be used for fear. Amen. You will not be used for fear. Amen. You will not be used for barbecue. Amen. You will not be used as meat in the covens. Amen. You shall not be used for fried chicken in the covens. Amen. The Lord protects you. Amen. The Lord keep your house. Amen. The Lord keep your family. Amen. The Lord keep your husband. Amen. The Lord keep your wife. Amen. The Lord keep your children. Amen. The Lord keep all that pertains to you. Amen. The long and the short of the story is that we were here ministering yesterday. I was still waiting for call. And I told them, I went into the spirit and the Lord opened my eyes. Rare times the Lord opens my eyes. I pray and I say, Lord, I want to know the situation report in this matter. We are praying in the house. When it was 12, I and my family were praying. And the Lord began to show me. I began to drum up. And I remembered when God did it at Ungwa. <laughs> And I told them, I say, he is on his way. He has been released. That I see, a, I see he's being held by so and so. I say, but all I know is that, Lord, before we are done in our fasting, I want to hear he has arrived. And I waited. I was in my office. I did not hear anything. But a few minutes later, I went after praying. A pastor called me. He said, that he, I said, what's happening? He said, they, they said he has called that they have released him. That is going. I said, Wow. I jumped up. I said, Lord, thank you. But they took his phone, they beat him and did all the nonsense they did. But they can't take his life. Yes. They will not take your life. Amen. Anything that came to take life around you, we dash some foul. Amen. We dash some goats. Amen. I said, We dash some foul. Amen. I said, Foul, foul. We dash some foul. Amen. Let the thing take the life of that chicken. Mm. Take the life of that goat. Amen. But may you be preserved in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God, I pray, I pray, I pray, I we pray, receive. I pray, I pray, I pray. I pray, I pray, I pray by your mercy, Shut by up. your grace. Nothing will cut short our life. Amen. This life you gave it to us. Yes. Nothing will cut short the life of your people in this assembly. Amen. Every member of this ministry, living epistles members globally, everywhere you are, I pray for you by the mandate of heaven. The word of God say you will not die. Amen. He say you will live to declare the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I pray for you according to the word of the Lord. We receive. The Bible said the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. You will carry the abundant life of God. Amen. None of you will die. Amen. None of you will die. Amen. You shall not lose your inheritance. Amen. Whether it is dead by sickness, we cancel it. Amen. Whether it is dead by assassins, we cancel it. Amen. Any form of death, whether by stray bullets, whether death that have been planned in the form of sham, mm. in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus Christ. Jesus died that we may have life. Yes. Carry abundant life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The devil will not cut short your life. Amen. Wicked men will not cut short your life. Amen. Your children will not lose their life. Amen. Your wife will not lose her life. Amen. Your husband will not lose his life. Amen. I cancel every untimely death in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord protects you. Amen. 
the Lord build an hedge of fire all around you. Amen. All around living a pieces, the Lord build an hedge of fire around us all. Amen. In the morning, we are preserved. In the afternoon, we are preserved. In Amen. the evening, we are preserved. Amen. In the night, we are preserved. Amen. Every day, we are preserved in the name of Jesus. Amen. The promise of the Lord for us is joy. The word of the Lord to us is a new song in our mouth. Yes, sir. We shall not weep. Amen. It is not song of mourning. Amen. It is not song of bereavement. Yes. It is songs of rejoicing. Yes. You will rejoice and be glad in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. I pray tonight for everyone. We receive. May they receive that strength that comes in joy. Amen. Cause them to have that catalyst of joy amen to go to whatsoever comes their way amen and may they grab that joy that is shed before them amen they will not lose their testimonies amen they will not lose their praise amen thank you for listening we hope you've been blessed by the word god still has so much more he wants to share with you so stay connected by subscribing to our youtube channel or at the living epistles global for prayers and counseling